Hey everybody, Bob here, Wrenching with Bob. So you could check your tire for arrows that point in the direction of travel to know which way is left and which way is right. But the better way, um, the more sure way here, surefire way, is that the ABS ring here is on the left hand side, so I know that this is the left side of my wheel. Now this comes to alignment. All right, I've got a rotor that's got to go into in between two brake pads that are on the caliper. And that's going to be a tight fit. And so what I've done in the past is I've taken a large screwdriver just before putting it on and just give a little pry to the brake pads, just a little pry just to make sure they're spread. Sometimes they can get jostled around and they'll kind of want to come out of their out of where they're sitting. Alright. There it goes. Now it's in there. Nobody's very happy about it. And this comes down to sort of that seating thing I was talking about. Because when you take it all apart Everything's all everything's been together and, and is all, all one big happy, happy family. When you take it apart and you put it back together, the forks move this way, and the forks move this way. The bike tips a little bit one way or the other. Um, the rotors are being bolted in and they're not seated yet, so everything is kind of on the move, and that's not a great thing for a brake system. So you do want to you do want to make sure that you give some allowance for a little bit of movement. This ring that comes out of here has come out of there. Um, and so I'm just going to seat it back in there. And you can see that this is terribly not in alignment, right? And that's probably because the other fork is rotated um, a bunch and this fork may not be rotated enough. Alright, so I've got the axle and this is a finely machined piece of metal, I gotta say. Um, what I did is I wiped it all off. It had some dust and dirt on it and uh, a little bit of oil and grease left over. I wiped it clean and then, uh, and then I just put some axle grease on the front leading edge there and on the back edge here. That will make it uh, go in a bit easier and uh, a little happier life. So with things lined up nicely, this will slide right in, but I'm going to need a little bit of a lift. Not much, but a little bit of a lift. And that made all the difference in the world. So I got the axle into here. I've got a lip here that it's got to cross. And so this, this can be a place where it wants to stop. And then on the other side, um, on the other side it may want to stop because it's wanting to shove this guy out. Um, and so you want to kind of keep control of that because it hasn't poked through yet, right? And so this becomes a little bit of a game. So I just grabbed a rubber mallet. I'm just going to give it a little tap, a little love tap of persuasion. There we go. So that was the first moment of, of resistance was, was actually getting past this ring. You can now see the axles peeking out of that ring, right, just peeking out, and the clack clack that was heard was it trying to get past the fork and couldn't. So I'm going to tap on it again, there we go. So now it got to sort of the next phase of, of getting held up, and I think that's because of misalignment of the fork, so I just rotated the fork a little bit, there we go, there we go, nice. This guy's now almost flush. It's going to get drawn in by the uh, by the other nut that goes on the other end of the axle, and so I'm not concerned about about that thing being flush yet. So here's the nut that goes on there, and I'm going to put this in here a little ways until it just gets snug, just barely snug. Uh, this is the big honking uh, hex that goes in there. I've even got it labeled BMW front. 
Um, this is a 12 millimeter hex, so that's going to go in there. The purpose here is that all this stuff is still a little bit loose, right? But it's wanting to all line up in the right axes. So by pumping the forks, you get all this stuff rotating and seating in the right way. And this will also help to seat that other caliper um, before we go and put the next caliper on. Um, and, then, and then we'll kind of repeat this again once we get the second caliper on. So I'm going to step on the back of uh, the lever there so that, oh dear, I did the big no-no. <laughs> I wanted to pump the forks and therefore I wanted to grab the front, the front brakes in order to make sure that they don't roll. And this isn't actually attached, so that was a major no-no. I just uh, did a full squeeze of the front brake. So the right way to do this then is to reinstall but not tighten the caliper to the fork. So because of my no-no that I did, the pistons in the left caliper are going to have been extended somewhat, which is uh, going to make it so that I really do need to spread these. Remember this is a hydraulic system, so when you're, when you're turning the screwdriver to spread the brake pads, you're not, you're not just torquing something, right? You're adding pressure against a hydraulic system. And so this takes, this takes a few seconds, right? So I'm just twisting it and leaving it twisted, just leaving that pressure on there, and you can actually watch those pistons come out very slowly. Now the more you monkey with uh, with pushing those brake pads out, the more you're going to have to bed your brakes when you're done. Um, you're really going to have to grab a lot of brake and pump and pump and pump to bring those pistons back in. So this is a little game of getting everything to line up all at the same time. The biggest hassle is the rotor, so Put it on the rotor first to give yourself an advantage and then work your way to, once you're on the rotor, then work your way towards getting those bolt holes in the right location, which is right about here. And don't forget that this clip has to be on here because that holds the ABS cable piece in place. So that's got to go in there first. And then finding that hole is the next spot. There we go. Now again, I'm going to put these these guys down as a hand tight, just barely snug. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and do the um, ABS piece. There's kind of no reason not to at this point, and I'm afraid I'll leave it to chance for later. This had some thread lock on it, so we're going to do a little blue thread lock. This is a T30. So we're going to insert the ABS sensor in there. And it's got a nice little sort of drip loop kind of a feel to it there. The way it was taken out. I don't have a torque spec for this particular bolt either. And this is going into a sensitive electronic item that is also a plastic housing. So I'm going to just give it, make it, it's more than snug. I mean, it's tight, but I didn't give it any, any sort of real big torque out of that. Um, it's just, uh, you know, it feels, it feels solid. Now we've got both sets of calipers installed. They're not torqued down. And the reason is I want to bed everything here. I want to, uh, I want to make, get everything to line up as best it can. So now I'm going to pump the front brakes a few times to start gaining some front brake until I do. And then once I do, uh, then I'll, I'm going to push down on the, on the forks to, to exercise the forks and get them all kind of happy and seated. So it took me two or three pumps to, to regain what feels like some good front braking force in there. Not, not so bad. So with the front brakes applied, Right, I'm not getting a lot of movement because I'm on the center stand and I'm standing on the edge of the center stand so it doesn't fold up. But I did get some movement there. Um, 
and that's probably good enough. In order to do the axle, you don't really want to have to have a, a big honkin' hex wrench the size of this thing at all. It's darned expensive. If you tighten these pinch bolts down, that axle can't move. And so what you want to do is you want to draw, you want to draw this guy that way before you tighten the, the pinch bolts. And then once it's sort of at its at its final location, and it's maybe starting to rotate, and stick your finger in there and find out, uh, then at that point, then you can tighten these pinch bolts. So I'm going to tighten the nut that's on this side with the big 12 millimeter um, 12 millimeter hex. The torque spec for this guy eventually is 50 newton meters for the main axle. All I'm really out to do here is to just sort of bind these two guys together. Um, this is all part of what, what you want to do to seat the wheel in here nicely and uh, make sure everything's nice and square and, and isn't uh, fighting itself in, in essence, right? The whole wheel and brake assembly is uh, pretty critical to the way we roll. So I'm going to grab this side of it just to feel so that I know that the axle is being pulled inward and when it starts to actually rotate because it's not being uh, held. And I can feel it sort of drawing in and drawing in and drawing in. And now it's stopped drawing. Eh, maybe it's drawing in a little bit more. Yep, a little bit more. And there we go, nice. So, and it's not even spinning on me, which is great. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those pinch bolts down. So these pinch bolts are gonna get tightened down to 19 Newton meters. And like the other pinch bolts, these are T40s. And you want to alternate back and forth with these. There we go. And we'll go back and do this one more time. Maybe even yet again. Because as one tightens, the other one becomes uh, potentially a little uh, effectively loose because one's tightening and the other one is being uh, squeezed down as well. At this point the other pinch bolts are tightened down to 19 newton meters, the T40. And now I can tighten down this side of the axle with a 12 millimeter hex and this is set to 50 newton meters. And here we are. It's not, it's not crazy tight given that it's an axle. Now that that's done, we can tighten the Torx T40s here, these pinch bolts, to 19 newton meters also. Okay. One, two, we'll go back, a little more. All right. So now the axle's complete. I'm going to take one more uh, round of kind of squishing on the forks a little bit before I tighten down the calipers uh, so that th those are totally bedded in as well. Not sure that I'm really moving. Yeah, yeah I can see that I'm moving it a bit. Yeah, it's uh, clo close to an inch or so, like my squeaky chair. These caliper bolts are T50s, and the torque spec for this is a 38 uh, newton meters. There we are. It's certainly a lot less torque than you would think uh, calipers would get. It's a little disconcerting. We have front wheel on, axle in, pinch bolts, calipers, calipers tightened. Now we're going to do the fender. The reinstallation of the fender is really not terribly hard, but it does take a little bit of finagling. I take these guys here and bend them a little bit and I press them in on either side in order to get them on the inside of the 
uh, the forks. And then back here, what you're paying attention to back here, getting this line up and above, up and above here. <laughs> it's caught on something. Dear Lord, what is it caught on? All right, so it does take a little finagling. So this, this leg here, I think is supposed to be on the outside of, of those two lines. This is gonna sit like this, right? And then this, this, this line here is gonna go in between, in between these two. And this guy here has a, has a little uh, press fit item that goes in this hole. So I can actually press fit that now if I want. That goes in. This guy goes in. Yeah, I think he'll stay better when he's hooked up on the other side too. And I imagine I have the same issue on this side with the line. The, the brake line should be have this guy behind instead of in front, like that, and then in that slot. So now this guy's in this slot. Uh, this plastic piece is out on the outside of the brake line here, and so this is all lined up. And these guys are lined up, they're ready to go. And on this side, this one is pushed in, this guy's in the slot, this guy's lined up, this guy's pretty much lined up, and the ABS line is not bound and not pinched and stuff. The six bolts, three on this side, three on the other, all T30s and they all call for blue thread lock. These call for like three Newton meters in the spec. Once again, I'm gonna check this ABS line, make sure that it's not doing anything funny. And at three Newton meters, Blue thread lock. This last item here is this block that winds up here, and this winds up here based upon this uh, clamping ring going, let's see, this away. The Torx is out towards me, so it's accessible, and the nut is actually welded on to the back side uh, so that can't get away I thought it could when I was taking it off I'm gonna put some blue thread lock on this guy as well it does sit in a terribly vibration prone area I'm going to put the bolt through here and then put it through steel the, through the band um, and then tighten it and then right so the block has to go first and then the band so that's going to go just fine so I just made that good and tight I do believe we have a Completed fork uh, restoration, completed removal and reinstallation of the wheel and the fender and the forks as well, uh, and the calipers. Thanks. Hope this was helpful. Uh, what do they say? Uh, smash that uh, like button and subscribe. Uh, so that's the deal.